So, hello guys and welcome to this third video in the Z80 computer project. In front of me you can see this Z80 test board. This is as simple as you can get for a Z80 system and it conveniently fits onto one breadboard. So, in terms of testing your Z80 this is as simple as you can actually go for it to fully function. It requires no RAM or ROM simply some resistors, some LEDs for show, and a couple of switches, and also one capacitor. At the moment I have this just hooked up to my power supply here on the 5 volt rail. So I'm going to give you a quick demo of how it works uh, and what it does, and then I'll give an explanation as to what's actually going on here. Okay, so I've now got the power supply plugged in and everything's turned on. So there's just 5 volts running in uh, through here from the PC power supply. If you want to know more about this, please ask, but this is essentially just an ATX PC power supply in a custom designed box. And all you really need to do to get this to work is this switch here actually just grounds the power supply on rail on the 24 pin connector. I can do a video on that uh, if you want to know more information. But in the meantime, let's get back to the main thing here. So now that there's power to the board, we can actually see the Z80 going through uh, the processes it does every time a clock occurs. So let me just start clocking the chip. This is the clock pin and this is the reset button. So clock button, reset button. So you can see that one LED is now on, and if I carry on clocking, the second LED is on. So this denotes 1, 2 and 4, it's binary, then goes to 3, then to 4, then to 5, then to 6, and etc. We can also reset the chip we hold down the reset button and give the chip a few clocks you can see all the LEDs go off and then if I carry on clocking as normal we get a bit of garbled data there as it reinitializes and then we get back to one again I need to look into that initialization thing to see if that's an issue in full systems and how it can be stopped I think it might be to do with holding the reset pin down a, a little bit longer actually for three clock cycles not two so, how does this work? Well, let's first do a little explanation of the board and what it's actually, how it's actually connected up. Uh, and then I'll go into what's actually going on here. So, how is this connected up? Well, you can actually find the schematic for this simple circuit online on z80.info. It's a really great website if you want to build your own Z80 computer, it's literally got all the information you need, including diagrams for the clock part of circuits uh, and full system schematics and things like that. It's really fantastic. Anyway, I'll put a link to that in the description. This is as simple as it gets. In the center here, we obviously have our processor. We then have two buttons, one to clock the processor and one to reset it. We then have three LEDs with their current limiting resistors on the first three pins of the address bus. So A0, A1 and A2. And then finally we have the full data bus pulled to ground. And we also have a uh, current smoothing capacitor in here. So just uh, kind of tap some of the current off to ground I think. Please correct me if I'm wrong there. And then we obviously just have our connections to power and ground and they're jumped across the board at the back end here. So, what's actually going on and how does this actually work? Well, when we first initialize the CPU, there is a bit of garbled data as, for a second as it kind of tries to re-find its position in RAM or, and the kind of the data bus and the address bus just go 
a bit crazy. But then once it's back to its starting position, a number of things happen. On the first clock, it reads the data bus. Now, every processor ever has a set of uh, kind of commands called opcodes or operation codes, and one of those codes, the simplest one, is no operation or no op. And for the Z80, no op is just a whole data bus grounded, so an 8 bit byte, eight zeros. So that's what's actually going on here. Every time the Z80 reads the data bus, it's just reading no op. Then we have LEDs on the address bus. This is really more for show, you don't actually require these, but it's so you can actually see what's going on, it's kind of a visual inspection thing. So, uh, when the Z80 reads no op, it kind of performs the no op process, as it were, over the next few clocks, and then, on the final clock, it moves to the next address in memory, so it's kind of assuming, because obviously it's ignorant to the fact that it isn't actually connected to any RAM or ROM, it's assuming that there is a program that it's running, running through, and so it's got to move to the next address in the RAM to get the next operation for the, co for the program. So, what we have to do is we have to take, uh, what it does is it then reads the data bus again. Now, obviously, because we're pulling everything to ground, it'll just get no operation again. So it just carries on through and moves to the next address. And that's what we're seeing here. Initially, what we actually see is no LEDs on. So it's in address zero. Then it goes to address one, then address two, then address three, and then address four. And it'll just keep counting up. So if I keep clocking that, eventually it'll keep counting up until it can actually count no further on its address bus, which is above 32,000, or above 64,000 even. So, that's essentially what's going on here. We're forcing it to do no operation and just watching it count through the address addresses that it's accessing. So, that's essentially all this board does. So, why is this useful? Well, we can actually test our chip by doing this. If the chip is functioning correctly, then it should be able to perform this task. And what's really convenient is that it's just on one breadboard. It's also nice to do if you've never used a Z80 before, because you can see the chip working and you can clock it yourself by hand, which is not something many processors can do. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.